everyone, welcome back to So You Want To Be A Vet. I'm Erin and I'm a second year veterinary medicine student at the University of Nottingham as well as a vet mentor scholar. If you want to find out a little bit more about vet mentor and what we do, stay tuned to the end because I'm going to signpost lots of different resources that you can go and use to help you on your journey to vet school. We also have a Getting Into Veterinary Conference coming up on the 21st of November and you can get free admission. So wait till the end and I'll explain everything about that. So today's episode is going to be all about MMIs and how you can prepare for these and remain calm and essentially tackle these as part of the application process. So an MMI is a multiple mini interview and some of the universities require you to do these as part of the application process instead of perhaps a typical style interview so an MMI consists of between five and ten different stations some might have an interviewer some might not and each station is about five minutes long you have a one to two minute break in between each station and there's a different task on each whether that's thinking through a different scenario talking about what you've done before why you want to be a vet um, some might have perhaps a maths based task something like dosage calculations things like that um, so because of the coronavirus pandemic, the whole interview process was had to change this year and I'm not sure which universities are offering MMIs at the moment or whether they will be next year. So my best advice is to go onto your university's website and try and have a look and see whether they require you to do a panel style interview or an MMI interview. So if you do have to sit an MMI, you might be wondering about some of the ways that you can go about practicing and prepping and making sure you're ready to sit in exams. So something really helpful that I found and I know other applicants found is to sit down with your head of year or biology teacher or chemistry teacher or even your careers advisor and ask them to do a mock interview with you. Um, I found it really helpful to sort of have a mock interview with different people because each interviewer will have a different interview style with the MMI. So it's really good to practice talking for your answers, not just with one person, but with lots of different people. And it helps you get prepared and it helps you to be able to explain your ideas and like demonstrate your thought process to lots of different types of people. So I found that really helpful. Um, if you speak to your head of year as well, or careers advisor, they may have more information on different places you can go for mock interviews. I went to the local private school near me and I did a mock interview there. So that's, there's just lots of opportunities out there for practice. The next thing to prepare is your answer to the question, why do you want to be a vet? Because it's inevitable that you will be asked this. Something I found really useful. There were loads of points I wanted to get across as part of this question, but what I found really useful was to sort of not count my points on my hand, but just assign each of my points a thumb or like one of my fingers. And then when I sat in interview, I could think about, oh, what's the point I assigned to my thumb? Oh, that was it. And then lead into what was on this finger and that finger and this finger and that finger. And I just found it a lot easier to remember all the things I wanted to get across because this is like your opportunity to demonstrate your understanding of the profession and where you want to go within the industry. And so it's crucial that you answer this question in such a way that isn't just I've always loved animals like you can say that but don't make that the only thing you say or I've always wanted to be a vet make sure you have different reasons and a way of remembering these whether you've just got a photographic memory and you can remember these anyway but I found it really helpful to remember a point assigned to each finger and then I made sure I got what I wanted to across another thing you can do is just have a little Google for some really simple veterinary nursing dosage calculations. If you just search these on Google, I'll try and find some resources and put them in the description below. But I just found these really helpful, really simple maths questions just to refresh my memory. And I set myself a five minute timer and try and answer perhaps four or five of these dosage calculation questions in that time frame. And that kind of mimicked the style of a maths MMI station. So that was really, really helpful. Well, don't stress too much about doing this. Oh, I've got to do it every day or oh, I have to do it once every week. Just do it as and when you feel you need the practice. It's just something short. You can just fit into your day. Five minutes here, five minutes there. But don't feel like you have to be doing it constantly because you will be OK anyway. 
lastly, I also found it really useful to try and find some ethical scenarios online. Um, these, these resources are available everywhere. And again, I'll try and link some in the description below, but I just sit down, read for an ethical scenario, and then just try and jot down, I don't know, four or five points I'd make about that scenario. So I'd say, I might choose to do this, someone else might choose to do that for this reason. However, I think that in this situation, this is the best option because, and I just try and give two opinions and then justify my reasoning behind my point. And you don't even have to do this aloud with someone else. You could just set yourself a five minute timer and just quickly jot it down on a piece of paper. And that's practice enough. You don't always need to verbally say it because everyone can put a sentence together. It's more about being able to make your points in a time frame. So if you find that you get really nervous before an interview, then there are a few things you can remember that might bring you some comfort. Um, first of all, try and bear in mind that the interviewer isn't trying to catch you out and you don't, they're not looking for correct answers. They're just trying to understand the reason why you want to go to their university, the reason why you're passionate about veterinary medicine. And they're just trying to gauge the way your brain goes about solving problems because this is an important feature in future vets. Um, so they're not trying to catch you out. You're not going to get told off if you say something wrong because you're going into the interview with the aim to become a vet student. You're not a vet already, so you don't need to have correct anatomical knowledge or you don't need to know complete facts about everything. It's just being able to show that you're passionate and you're interested and you're enthusiastic and that you do have an understanding of the profession itself. Something else to bear in mind is that each station is marked individually. So the interviewer at station two won't know what you said at station one. So if you do have a bit of a rocky station and you feel a bit like, oh, maybe I feel like I underperformed or I didn't come across as well, or I didn't make my points that I wanted to, it's okay. Each one is marked individually. So just remember that just because you might have had one or two rocky stations, that doesn't mean you won't get an offer from that university. Try and look at each one as an independent interview. And if you do have a bit of one that you don't feel as great about, then just remember, okay, that's done. Clear mind, use that one and two minute break in between to take a deep breath, have a sip of water and be like, okay, that's done, it's happened. Moving on to the next one where I know I can do better. And it's just about having that positive mindset and not looking at everything as a whole interview, looking at it as small individual interviews. Another thing is not to feel afraid um, about asking an interviewer to repeat a question. Um, it can be really difficult, especially when you're trying to make so many different points to remember what you were initially asked, particularly when a station is approximately five minutes long. So if you do get halfway and you feel like you're going on a tangent, just ask the interviewer, would you mind repeating the question for me? And then you can make sure you answer it completely. Don't feel like, oh, because I started speaking, I have to carry on and carry on, carry on. If you want anything clarified, then ask, it's fine. And another thing is that if you do change your answer halfway through, perhaps it's an ethical scenario and the interviewer is trying to draw more information out of you and draw more information out of you. And then you decide, oh, actually, I wouldn't do that in that situation anymore. I've changed my mind. Don't go along with your original point. It's completely OK to say, right, I've changed my mind as long as you explain your reasoning why. That will not, they will not mark you down for that. They just want to know the way your brain works. And if you have changed your mind, as long as you can say, I've done so for A, B and C, then you will be okay. The next really useful thing to go through, I find, is what you should do the night before an interview. If you haven't had an interview before, it can be like a bit difficult to know how to calm your nerves and how to feel a bit better. So my number one thing is to just have a relaxing bath or a relaxing shower, turn off your phone, don't look on, I don't know, the student room and see everyone getting like, oh my gosh, I have my interview tomorrow. Don't let yourself get whipped up in that. Step away from it all. Take a deep breath. Have some time to yourself. Watch a film if you need to. You don't need to be cramming your notes. Just relax and do things that you enjoy. Um, 
prepare your outfit and pack your bag the night before. If you have to travel to the interview, then make sure you plan your journey the night before as well. And that way you can go to bed with a fresh mind, know what you're doing in the morning, and there's not gonna be like a fast paced rush to try and get where you need to be and a worry that you're not gonna be there on time or that you're not prepared because everything will already be complete and ready for you to go. Something I found really useful the night before an interview was to just get into bed, have an early night, but as I was falling asleep, I put on um, one of these Headspace mindfulness sessions um, and it's on the app. I'll link it in the description down below, but there's one for preparing and calming your mind the night before an interview. And I found it so useful. I even, before my Nottingham interview, I listened to it in the car a couple of times as I was driving, just to calm myself down and feel like, what I'm in control of this situation and it's okay and that was so useful for me in just feeling a little bit more relaxed and walking in with the mindset that everything is going to be fine so you might be wondering now where you can go for further help um, as I said before check your university's websites because it will tell you whether or not they do a panel style interview or whether you need to prep for an MMI so go there use your resources have a look and make sure you know what style of interview you're doing and then you can target your preparation correctly vet mentor also offer a few different opportunities for you to prepare yourself for mmis so first of all we have our getting into vetman conference coming up on the 21st of november we have a few amazing guests we have animal aspirations from the rbc attending and we have the yorkshire vet julian norton attending too amongst some other brilliant speakers so if you want to attend that and get all your questions answered on getting into veterinary medicine, including those on interviews and MMIs, then use the link in our description below to sign up and use the code INSTAVET at the checkout for completely free admission, which is fantastic. This is a great resource use it to your advantage. You can also apply to join our medical leadership programme and as part of that we sometimes host interview sessions where there's mock interviews and you can ask your questions about interviews so the sign up link for that is in the description below. It's a competitive application but you may as well give it a shot because you could get in and get loads of helpful practice. Sophia and I also host our Say You Want To Be A Vet podcast and we have some episodes coming out soon on interviews and how you can prepare yourselves and our experiences with interviews so stay tuned for those the links to subscribers down there as well we've also hosted an open board series in which we speak to really like talented and amazing individuals from each of the festivals across the uk and they go through their interview experience and their application experience so you can find out what they did to prepare for their mmis if you're applying to that same vet school and with that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. And most of all, it is interview season now. So good luck with everything. It's all going to go amazing. Just stay calm and know you've got this. Bye.